So today we're going to get into talking about trade policy. Now, this topic has uh, the potential to sound, you know, very political, but we're going to analyze these policies and the effects of what what these policies have using just pure, simple uh, economics and just straightforward science. Okay, so these things may have normative conclusions or normative implications, I should say, uh, but the analysis that we're going to do is going to be purely positive. Okay. And what we're going to, you know, do today is we're just going to introduce, you know, determinants for this world price, right? So previously, we've kind of just given it to you, like the problems or anything that we've done have just given you what the world price is and sort of asked you to accept that, okay? But we haven't really talked about determinants or, or the market on the world level to sort of answer, well, where does this world price come from? Okay, obviously it comes from comparative advantages, but where does it really, you know, how do we determine it? How do we figure it out? And to do that, we're gonna get into what are known as the import demand curves and the export supply curve. Okay, so we're going to get into these two things today, and we're going to talk about equilibrium on the world market. Okay, <clears throat> so what is the import demand curve? Let's start there. So the import demand curve is exactly what it sounds like. This is the demand by a country for imports okay <clears throat> and so we're going to examine you know two countries hypothetically we'll say we'll examine the u.s and france okay and we're going to talk about the wine market again i'm just picking this you know for no special reason uh just because it's the one that i uh was thinking of okay and let's say we have a u.s market for wine it's got a demand curve and a supply curve. Okay. And it has some equilibrium price. And I'm going to not draw the equilibrium quantity. Okay. Just because uh, I don't want to get into that uh, right now. And it will end up just muddling our discussion later. Okay. Now we know that if the, if the, if the price, the world price was P star. So if the world price is equal to P star, then no imports. Okay, so if the world price is equal to uh, the domestic equilibrium price, then this country is not going to bother importing because they wouldn't be saving any money, they wouldn't be, you know, gaining anything. Again, we're assuming that these are uh, all homogenous products. All right, there's no difference between U.S. wine and French wine in this particular example, okay? And if the world price were lower, so let's call it uh, world price one, right? We know that there would be, let's say, QD1, and this is QS1, all right? So if uh, world price is... PW1, then imports would be equal to QD1 minus QS1. Okay, just this difference right here between the amount that American consumers purchase and the amount that American producers produce. Okay, and the difference between these has to be the imports from France. And if, I, if the world price were to go down even further, so let's say it goes down to here, right? This difference between the quantity demanded domestically and the quantity supplied domestically would increase, right? So if PW2, then imports would be equal to QD2 minus QS2. And we can see just from the graph, right, that Americans at this lower price are buying more wine total, 
and at this lower price, American wine producers are producing less. And so we know that QD2 minus QS2 must be bigger than QD1 minus QS1. All right, I'll put these in brackets just so that we can refer to them as quantities. <clears throat> and so we know that this is going to happen. So as the world price goes down, the quantity of imports purchased is going to increase. Okay, So if we were to put up here, since this is where I've got room left on the sheet, right? if we were to draw an import demand schedule, right? let's just put that up. Remember, this is the quantity of imports, so Q on this axis is equal to QD minus QS, and this is the world price, right? <clears throat> okay, so if it were P star, there would be zero imports demanded, and at a lower world price, which we called PW1, right, there was some number of imports demanded, that looks like it'll be about here, so we'll call this QD1 minus QS1. And at a lower world price, PW2, the quantity of imports demanded was bigger. All right, so we'll call this QD2 minus QS2. All right, I'll put these in brackets again. And what we have is a downward sloping, if I can draw a straightish line, we have a downward sloping import demand schedule, okay? Which just says, which is the intuitive thing, that at lower world prices, countries will import more of the good, okay? And so it's a very simple, you know, way to think about things. At, as the world price decreases, the number of imports will increase, okay? at least in terms of uh, this domestic, in this case, U.S. market. So if the price of wine falls on the, on the international market, then the U.S. should predictably purchase more uh, wine from abroad. Okay, so just real briefly, that is the import demand curve. <clears throat> now let's turn it over, literally, uh, and go to the export supply. Okay. Now, the export supply curve is exactly analogous to the import demand curve. This is the supply of exports. Okay. And so, let's consider still the French market. So, let's draw a market for France. Okay. So, we've got price and quantity. This is French wine, okay, they have a downward sloping demand curve and an upward sloping supply curve, and let's just hypothetically say that the world price is equal to P star, okay, so if PW is equal to P star, then exports equal zero. Okay, <clears throat> but if the world price were higher, so let's say the world price was PW1, okay, or let's use A, I guess, since we used uh, ones and twos in the last one, we use A's over here. So if PW is equal to PWA, then exports will equal, well, let's figure it out. Okay, so if we just come straight over, we come straight down, we've got QSA, and I've got QDA. Okay, so if the world price were to increase above P star, French producers would want to produce more wine, and French consumers would purchase less wine. Okay, but uh, they, the producers would still sell the wine, they would just sell these as exports. Okay, so exports would be equal to QSA minus QDA. Okay, and if the world price were to increase 
to PWB. All right, so if PW is equal to PWB, then we should expect the French producers to produce more wine, right? First law of supply. And we should expect the French consumers to buy less wine, okay? Then in this case, exports equal QSB minus QDB. Right? Just this difference between the amount that is produced and the amount that is consumed domestically. Okay? And so, and again, we know that QSB minus QDB quantity is bigger than QSA minus QDA. Okay? And so, if we were to plot these price changes, on one axis, call it the world price, and we have quantity. Again, just like with the uh, import demand, this is the quantities determined here. Okay, what we'd have is if the world price was P star, we'd have zero exports. If it was P W A, we would have some positive number of exports. And if it was uh, B, we'd have an even higher number of exports. And that gets us our export supply curve. Okay. So we have the export supply curve as an upward sloping uh, curve, reflecting the idea that if you are an exporter of a good, that means the world price is above your domestic equilibrium. And if that world price increases, then you want to uh, increase your exports. Okay. <clears throat> so a generalizable uh, equation, so import demand is going to be equal to the quantity demand minus the quantity supply. And the export supply is equal to quantity supplied minus quantity demand. Okay. Now keeping these two things straight is very important, right? For imports, remember you only import if you want to buy more than you're currently producing domestically. And you want to export if you're producing more than you are buying domestically. Okay. So you have to keep these two equations here straight. Import demand means that the quantity demand is bigger than the quantity supplied. So we're going to subtract supply from demand, or quantity supplied from demand rather. <clears throat> the export supply, you only export if the quantity supply is bigger than the quantity demand. So we subtract the quantity demand from the quantity supplied. Okay. <clears throat> so keeping these two things straight is very uh, important. The easy way to do it, if you're talking about demand, quantity demand comes first. If you're talking about supply, quantity supply comes first. Okay. So if you keep that in mind, you'll keep these things straight.